Hello and welcome back to module three of this developing digital skills in your classroom e-learning course. Module three is all about how to create digital resources and digital content. In this particular topic, we're gonna to be having a little look at how we might write digital content for the web. So, when we're talking about writing things for the web, we're gonna try and split this into two categories. The first category is gonna be around online discussion. And the second category is gonna be around web publishing. We'll revisit web publishing later on in this unit as well. The important thing about an effective online discussion is to make sure that it's got some effective structure. One of the things we've come to realize over the years is that young people across Europe actually aren't very good at learning online in a structured formal way. Giving them exposure to tools which could help them learn is really, really important. And online discussion tools is just one part of this. Just like an offline discussion, a good online discussion is gonna need an effective prompt, some sort of preparation, some sort of practice, particularly if you're using a new technology, and also effective facilitation. This facilitation might be from a peer, but it might also be from the teacher. Online discussions bring lots and lots of benefit. They benefit the people that watch, they benefit from the people that watch and think, and of course they also benefit the people who also um, think and contribute to the discussion. And that's really what we're trying to get our students to do. Watch the discussion, think about the discussion, contribute to the discussion. As a teacher, it's important that we try and make sure that as we facilitate the discussion, they take part in all three things. If we're going to develop online discussions in our classroom, one good bit of advice might be to actually create some kind of community guidelines. The best community guidelines are created by the students themselves, perhaps using a collaborative document. And we'll talk more about this in the next unit. There's lots of different types of online discussion as well. They can take the form of a back channel, an online discussion forum, or even an open conversation using a hashtag. Let's have a look at some of these things in a bit more detail. Neat chat is quite a good way to actually develop a quick discussion forum. It's free to use, and you can basically just send a quick URL to other people that you want to participate. It'll save the discussion for a number of days after it's happened, so people that were from absence from class can go back and have a look at what other people thought and talked about. A famous quote from Hybrid Pedagogy says though, the discussion forum is dead, long live the discussion. What does this mean? Well, it means of course, that although there are still places for discussion forums, such as the one we've got in this e-learning lab, it means there are lots of other ways that we can have a web-based discussion these days. Twitter is a good example of this. This is an example of a public discussion and a conversation is quite often linked with hashtags. We're using e-learning course for our, our hashtag for this course, but there are lots of other hashtags that we can use for our own professional development or also to link classrooms. For example, SLT chat, senior leadership chat, is a leadership discussion that happens across Europe most Tuesday evenings. There are other tools as well that can be used for what we describe as back-channeling. A back-channeling is a conversation which goes on in the background that's talking about the main learning task. There's tools like Scribbler and Today's Meet that we can use to assist with these. Both of these tools are really, really effective, but again, it's important to make sure that technology doesn't become a distraction. Let's have a quick now about online publishing. The power of online publishing is in the audience. Audience is a really important thing for a school. Schools and classrooms need to be built with audience in mind. This is a great school, Monk Seton High School in the northeast of England, which is built all around audience in a high-tech, technology-rich environment. It's important that we remember that we learn by telling stories, and that has got to include both physical stories and also digital stories. So, what sorts of things might we use to tell a story or to publish online? It could be a website, perhaps in the form of an e-portfolio, maybe using something like Google Sites. It could be a website in the form of a wiki, for example, MediaWiki or perhaps Wikipedia. It could be a website to tell a story, for example, Weebly or Wix.com, both free tools um, with paid features where you can quickly develop your own websites. It could be a website in the form of a blog, such as blogspot.com or wordpress.org, or it might even be something like an eBurst. Zooburst is a great eBook creator particularly for early years and early primary school educators. So, what are the key principles of publishing? Whatever, whatever you, just whichever platform you decide to use, it's important that you remember, you've got a purpose. What's the purpose of the work? 
it's important that we think about who is the work intended for. It's not just going to be for the student and the teacher. It's important that we think about what features of the specific tool that the students and teachers used and also what application was used for and how you might improve on that or use a different application next time. Remember, this is about audience and giving student audience for their work. It's not all about digital, it's all about the audience. This is a picture I took in Iceland last summer. It was a primary school that was shut for the summer and the, the teacher there had done a very, very clever thing by taking the work off the walls and putting it the other way around so as people walked past the building they could see the students' work. What a simple and powerful way to give audience to work which otherwise wouldn't have ever happened. Hope you've enjoyed some of the, the questions and challenges in that module. Go away and have a play with some of the tools that we've talked about there, whether it's starting to create your own website or thinking about how you might use hashtags, back channels or discussions in your classroom. See you in the next video.